if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down to history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watch watching women's basketball is not just because of one person, it's because of me too, and I want y'all to realize. Angel Reese thought she had Caitlin Clark, the reigning queen of the court, all figured out. She thought she could get under Caitlin's skin, mess with her head, and maybe even throw her game off. But Caitlin isn't just any player. She is the golden girl, the one who rewrote the record books. Every shot, every dribble, every move she made told a story. Angel's attempt to ruffle Caitlin's feathers ended up being a total flop. It was like she was poking a bear and Caitlin was ready to pounce. It was a lesson learned the hard way. Never underestimate your opponent, especially when it's someone as talented and determined as Caitlin Clark. But before we get into what happened next, let's take a step back and see the moment that really set the stage for this epic rivalry. It was during the 2023 NCAA Finals and the game was heating up. Angel Reese, playing for LSU, was just celebrating her team's victory when she did something a little cheeky. She flashed her championship ring at Caitlin Clark and taunted her with a you can't see me gesture. Knows a ring is coming. Lindsay with USA Today again. Caitlin, can you tell us uh, at the end of the game what happened? There's a lot blown up on Twitter about Angel Reese following you around, pointing to her ring finger and taunting you. Honestly, I have no idea. I was just trying to get to the handshake line and shake hands. Fast forward to 2024, and we had the rematch everyone was waiting for. Iowa versus LSU. Clark versus Reese. This wasn't just any game. It was a chance for Caitlin to redeem herself after that championship ring incident. She was on fire that night, dominating the court in an absolutely mind-blowing way. Caitlin dropped a staggering 41 points dished out 12 assists, and nailed nine three-pointers. It was like watching a masterpiece unfold right before our eyes. The result? LSU was stunned. Their faces were a mix of shock and disbelief. It was like they were watching a movie. In one incredible play, Caitlin managed to shake her defender loose and get an open shot. Angel Reese tried to recover, but she was just a step too slow. Caitlin's three-pointer swished through the net, and that was it. Angel Reese's attempt to defend Caitlin was like trying to stop a hurricane. It was a hopeless cause. Meanwhile, Haley Van Lith, who had been chasing Caitlin all over the court, was starting to look like she was in a cartoon. She had that classic, I can't believe what I'm seeing expression, as Caitlin kept knocking down three-pointers from all over the place. At that point, Caitlin was showing everyone why she was the reigning champion. Then came their WNBA matchup, and the anticipation was electric. Everyone was on the edge of their seats, not just for the plays and scores, but also for the growing tension between these two rivals. In the third quarter, Kennedy Carter from the Chicago Sky tried to get the upper hand on Caitlin with a sneaky little hip check. Mabry doubled off to Carter. Her jumper is good. Kennedy Carter now with 12 points off the bench. At first, everyone thought Kennedy Carter's hip check was just a regular foul. But then, the refs took a closer look and decided it was a flagrant foul, which basically means it was a really bad move. Angel Reese, who was celebrating Carter's play, seemed to think it was a great move. But considering the history between Caitlin and Angel, a lot of people were wondering if Reese was really just supporting her teammate or if she was trying to get back at Caitlyn. Was it team spirit or was it a personal attack? Carter and Clark. I mean, that's clearly a foul which was called. The question is, will they call it unnecessary? Kennedy Carter. Even though Kennedy Carter's move was pretty rough, Caitlin handled it like a pro. She stayed calm, focused, and sank both of her free throws. One and Carter, Clark goes to the line and hits the first. The game was super close now, and it came down to the wire. In the end, the Fever squeaked out a win, 71-70. Caitlin played a solid game with 11 points, eight rebounds, and six assists. Angel Reese wasn't far behind, grabbing 13 rebounds. Game two was even more intense than the first one. 
Everyone was on the edge of their seats, watching these two rivals go head to head, and Caitlyn was ready to prove why she was the Fever's number one draft pick. Right from the start, Caitlyn was in complete control. She was showing off her skills and leading her team like a pro. She was making plays, driving to the basket, and scoring with ease. Back to the inside-outside game, where they were coming off of a loss against the Mystics. They want to clean some things up. Caitlin Clark's first shot. Caitlin was oozing confidence. She was taking big shots without even thinking twice. One time, Aaliyah Boston set a great screen for her, giving Caitlin just enough space to hit her signature shot. It was like watching a sniper take aim and hit the bullseye. Christy Sides told us we have got to find a body on Reese. Clark gets freed up. By halfway through the first quarter, it was obvious that Caitlin was in her zone. She was slicing through the defense like a hot knife through butter, scoring at will. She was perfect from the field, going three for three. But it wasn't just her scoring that was impressive. She was also making plays for her teammates, setting them up for easy shots and really helping the Fever's offense flow. As the game went on, she continued to take control, pushing the tempo and keeping everyone guessing. She was half court and had the sky defense all over her. Angel Reese thought about helping out, but she hesitated. Caitlin used that moment to make a great pass to Aaliyah Boston, who scored an easy layup to tie the game at 42. Caitlin Clark scoreless, it's 5.51 left in the first quarter, and she post feeds Aaliyah Boston. But Caitlin wasn't done yet. Even though there were two defenders on her, she was able to use Aaliyah Boston's screen to her advantage and drive to the basket. She scored an easy layup to give the Fever the lead. Trying to find some space, goes reverse style. The Fever was only up by two points, and there were less than 10 seconds left in the half. Caitlin decided to take on the entire Sky team. She drove to the basket, and everyone on the Sky team tried to stop her. Just when it looked like she was going to get a shot, Samuelson hit a three-pointer to extend the Fever's lead to 47-43. What a way to end the half. Largest lead for either team has been seven. Clark with the kick out to Samuelson. And Entering the third quarter, Caitlin was on fire. She was hitting shot after shot, and she wasn't slowing down. She took a step back, created some space, and drained another three-pointer. The Fever fans were going crazy. The Fever's defense forced a turnover, and the ball ended up back in Caitlin's hands. She drove to the basket and passed it to Wallace, who passed it back to Caitlin. Caitlin then found Boston wide open under the basket for an easy layup. Even though the sky were all over Caitlin, she was still able to find ways to get to the basket. It was like she had a magic touch. She was so smooth and graceful, and she never seemed to be in any trouble. But things took a turn for the worse late in the third quarter. Angel Reese, maybe out of frustration or a desire to make a statement, got a little more physical. As Caitlin was driving to the basket, Reese came up from behind and swung her arm. It looked like she was trying to block the shot, but it ended up hitting Caitlin hard in the face. The tension in the arena was electric after that. Foul, I believe, to Angel Reese. Yep, across the head, and they will go to the monitor. Instead of getting rattled by the incident, Caitlin seemed even more determined. She was playing amazing, leading the Fever's offense and making great plays. She was staying calm under pressure and making sure her team stayed in control. With just a few minutes left in the game, Marina Maybray from the sky was trying to get an open shot. She used a screen to try and lose Caitlyn, but Caitlyn was having none of it. She fought over the screen and didn't give Maybray any space. Caitlyn not only caught up to Maybray, but she also jumped up and blocked her shot. Maybray was trying to hit a three-pointer, but Caitlyn timed her jump perfectly. Caitlyn then stole the ball from the blocked shot and quickly turned it into a fast break. She passed the ball to Aaliyah Boston, who scored an easy layup. Clark's got 14 blocks in her WNBA career, and it ends with... To seal the deal, Caitlin made a play that showed everyone why she's one of the biggest stars in the WNBA. She got the ball, used the screen to her advantage, and pulled up for a deep three-pointer. And guess what? She buried it. 
uh, at least in the fourth quarter, an eight to three rebounding advantage. Clark pulls, fire. Caitlin was so confident as she shot that ball. You could just tell she knew it was going in. She hit a 30-footer to give the Fever a seven-point lead with just over three minutes left. The crowd went wild. It was a perfect ending to an incredible game. Caitlin then made a beautiful pass to Smith, who scored an easy layup to seal the win for the Fever. Gets her on this! Someone forgot about Smith! Someone! This game was a huge deal for Caitlin and the Fever. They beat the Sky 91-83, which was their second win in a row against their rivals. It was also their first time winning two games in a row this season. Caitlin was a monster in this game. She scored 23 points, including some big three-pointers. She was so close to a triple-double, with nine assists, eight rebounds, and two blocks. She dominated the game on both ends of the court. And get this, only four players in WNBA history have had a stat line like hers, and Caitlin is the only rookie on that list. But the excitement didn't stop there. As the anticipation built, all eyes turned to the third game between Caitlin Clark's fever and Angel Reese's sky, a showdown that promised to be nothing short of historic. The first half was crazy. The teams were tied seven times and changed leads eight times. It was clear that these two teams were evenly matched. At first, the Fever were dominating, and they had a big 15-point lead in the third quarter. But then Angel Reese and the Sky started to come back. They fought hard and eventually tied the game at 82, with just three minutes left. The crowd was going crazy. The game was tied again at 84, with less than a minute to go. That's when Angel Reese stepped up and made a huge play. She scored a tough layup to give the Sky the lead, and they held on to win the game. Tie game. Allen looking into Reese. Reese back to work on Smith. Reese pops it in. No. This game was more than just another rivalry game. It showed us how much both Caitlin and Angel have grown as players. Angel Reese really stepped up and played the best game of her young career. She scored 25 points and grabbed 16 rebounds. She was dominant on both ends of the court, and she helped the Sky win a big game. But it wasn't just Angel who delivered a standout performance. On the other side, Caitlin Clark was putting on a show of her own. She was scoring, rebounding, and making plays. She actually tied the record for most assists by a rookie in a double-double game in WNBA history. She had 17 points and 13 assists. She was running the show, and she was making everyone around her better. Even though the Fever lost, Caitlin was a class act. She gave Angel Reese credit for playing a great game. I thought she ran really well in transition. I think she got a couple and ones in transition. Obviously, she played a really great game. Um, I think they definitely knew to be physical with us. I think. They but this rivalry goes beyond the court, shaping the future of the entire WNBA. WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert pointed out that Angel Reese is just as important as Caitlin Clark in making the league more popular. While many credit Clark for the WNBA's rising fame, Engelbert stressed that it's not just one player. Stars like Reese, Rakia Jackson, and Cameron Brink are all helping the league grow. She believes this rookie class will be talked about for generations. Engelbert also touched on the racial divide between the fan bases of Clark and Reese, with both players facing racist and sexist remarks. While the WNBPA has spoken out, Engelbert has mainly focused on the positive impact their rivalry has had on the WNBA's success. Even with all the attention, these two stars remain laser-focused on what matters most, winning. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are lighting up the WNBA, but they're not caught up in the Rookie of the Year debate. On August 30th, Clark's Fever beat Reese's Sky 100, 81 with Clark putting up a career-high 31 points and 12 assists. Meanwhile, Reese made history with her 23rd double-double as a rookie. Despite the buzz, both players insist they're focused on team success, not individual awards. Winning basketball games, that's our focus, said Clark, and Reese echoed her thoughts. As their teams battle in the playoffs, the media is trying to create a rivalry, 
The Clark and Reese are all about winning, not headlines. It's obvious that Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese aren't just rivals. They're pushing each other to be the best they can be. Every time they play, it's a battle, but it's also a beautiful thing to watch. They're reminding us that in the heat of competition, greatness can be born. This rivalry is writing a new chapter in women's basketball history. Get ready for more thrills, more drama, and more unforgettable performances. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this.